Live from New York. It's a show with a very special guest coming on in approximately one hour. It's First Things First. Today, were you impressed with the Celtics? Not at all. Really? I should be impressed? Only one. They were so lucky and fortunate. Now, they did keep trying, but they were fortunate to win this game. Look, first of all, they had five days rest. Indiana coming off a wildly emotional game at Madison Square Garden had one day rest, okay? And on top of that, everybody's been talking about how bad, I don't say bad you guys are at home, but how middling you are, 15 and 14 over the last three postseasons, already lost a, play, a home game in each of the last two rounds. Bad is okay. Against, okay, yeah, so, so people have been fine. talking about how bad you are at home. So you definitely want to get that, you know, erase that. And here you are, you should have lost to a team that is so young, they have no idea what it's like to be on this stage. And if it weren't for some major gaffes at the end of the game by the Pacers, they'd be down 0-1. Here's the first. Tyrese Halliburton is great. And he was great last night until the end. What? I mean, he that, just lost I mean, the ball. that can't happen. I mean, he just lost the ball. There were other turnovers. Yes. There were other turnovers he made late. So he had five in the last five and a half minutes, including overtime. Yep. And then I want to see after this the shot by Brown. Credit Brown, great shot. But the Pacers, why didn't they switch? Oh, well, here's I'm another sure Halliburton turnover. There's another first. turnover. Yeah, Burton. okay. Here so they should have switched. We, so we can really see it there. But at that point in the game, why aren't you just switching everything? Yeah, and if and, he, and, and if look, covered. could he have tried? Yeah, but you if they had switched, T.J. McConnell could have denied Jalen the ball in the corner. Or, and maybe Jalen just out of instinct cuts to the basket so you get a two-point layup. No way is he getting a two-point. No, not I'm going just saying two. I think McConnell could have denied him. If they would have switched, he could have gotten in front switch. of Jalen so you couldn't have got that pass. That's a okay. tough pass from the, the baseline. And right even if, they, if he does get the pass, if McConnell's there, like I disagreed with the broadcast when the broadcast was saying, I know J.J. and LeBron have been talking a lot about fouling up three, and in general, I agree with that philosophy. But because Siakam was late, he didn't have an opportunity to foul. But if McConnell's there, you can foul on the Absolutely. catch. Absolutely. You can foul on he the can, catch, and the you're catch. even allowed to run through the pass, foul him like that before he even yep. has the ball. I, I understood why Siakam didn't foul because he was late. And, and, Brown, and it's arguable. I get because Brown kind of, you know, exactly. paused, so maybe you could have, but it's a risk. It would have been risk. No but point, if they had switched, I agree with you. But it was, t listen, I. I am not Mr. Big Market. I, the, I'm from the Midwest. I, there's a lot of teams that I publicly root for that are not on the coasts. So this is not about Indiana's market size. But Pacers fans, this is why we can't take you seriously. Wow. This is why. Sorry. They, you disagree, Brew? This is. You just what, mean the fact that they collapsed? Yes. I mean, games like this is why. Even though none of us, I know some people think the Celtics are a great team. I don't think any of us on this table think they're as good as their metrics or their record right. suggests. And we did not spend a second contemplating the Pacers winning this series because this was a game that Boston was dying to give to you. Mm -hmm. That Boston would take a big lead and then stop playing. That they, they played into your hands defensively. Al Horford, God love him, oldest player in the playoffs, playing well. But if if Al Horford's taking 12 threes, you're doing what the Pacers want you to and do. And that's what they did. And, and, and yeah. so, and Indiana, you had a five-point lead with a minute and a half left. You had a three-point lead with the ball with thirty under 30 seconds left. Ten twice. Seconds. Right. You had it twice. Once with 30, once with 10. And the turnovers were your all-NBA-ish guy dribbles the ball off his knee, yeah. and you can't get a ball inbounded. Yep. They were literally the type of turnovers that high school, junior Remember high school they had school a timeout left yes. there, too. They could have called a timeout. And, and look, Rick Carlisle, so, I think we all understand he's a really good coach. But these plays, and he owned it. I'll give yeah. him credit. These are on him, though. Again, why aren't you switching on the last play by Jalen Brown? And why don't you have them call the timeout right there so you don't have to, you know, throw that turnover? Yeah, do you want to give any credit to the Pacers? 
That we thought that they were going to cool down offensively because they were so hot. Pacers this postseason, offensive rating of 121, shooting 51% from the field, 38% from three, and everything. You're like, well, maybe that uh, hot shooting Knicks game kind of, you know, cooked the books a little bit. But Josh said game one at the Celtics still shot 53.5%. Yesterday, 67% game seven. I, I, so do I you do, expect this to continue? I, I do give them credit. Like, the Pacers have impressed me this postseason. Um, I, I picked Boston in six, but largely because I thought Boston might get lackadaisical and stuff. But Indiana plays well. They play hard. Their style of play is the same as Boston as far as the pace. They were number one and two in the league in pace. Yeah, Pacers. So that, <laughs> but that plays, I think, that's what Indiana wants. You're going to run with it. You're going to play fast with us. I think that favors the Pacers. And if I'm of, of each of these teams, if I was a player on either team, I would feel better if I'm a Pacer this morning. Now, I'm ticked oh. off that we gave up the game. I, I understand that. But now, if there was any doubt, they're the young team. They haven't been this far. You're facing a team that's been in six conference finals in the last eight years mm -hmm. and is the best record in the league by a mile. Now they know. They went to bed last night like, man, we, we can not only play with them, we can beat them. So I, I think now uh, boss is going to have his hands full. Oh, I, the I, I totally disagree. I think that now if you're the Pacers, you're like, all right, so we have to beat them five times in seven games. We're not going to. They're going to lose game two. And they're going to, at best case scenario, be down 3-1 when the next game's played in Boston. Like, I just, no, I think the series ended last night. Okay. I, now, I don't think the Pacers had more than a puncher's chance going into it. But last night was such a crushing loss because it would be one thing if Boston made great plays down the stretch. Now, Jalen made a very tough shot, shot, and I will give him credit for that. But the, the Pacers made some mistakes multiple mistakes in the final couple minutes that they didn't get punished for because Jason Tatum, who I know we're okay. going to talk about, couldn't make a shot. Yeah. Like they, But they, wouldn't you rather be like, we gave them the game rather than they just beat us? I, I, I think emotionally, I, I, I just think they're going to be down 0-2 in a couple days and the series is over. Okay. I kind of agree with both of you there, to be honest with you. Well, there's 36 <laughs> points and 12 rebounds. Championship. Wilds is done making predictions. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. I thought you there's guys no both made good points. <laughs> more predictions. Two for seven in the fourth. He was 0 for four in the final 930 of the fourth. Also, just eye test wise, it's kind of like, here you go, Derek White. Yeah. Here you go, Jalen Brown. Why don't, why don't you take care late, of it? Late, late. Yeah. So do you feel worse. better or worse about Tatum? Yeah, I mean, it's worse. I mean, you, you know what it reminded me of a bit? People kind of memory hold this game. But game six last year, round two against Philly. Philly's up 3-2. It's after the two great Harden games. And Tatum started that game one for 14. Mm. And Philly couldn't take control, couldn't create separation despite that. And then the final three minutes, Tatum hit four threes, it finished five for 21, Boston yes, wins the game. Yes. And it was, it, to me, it was similar to last night, which is Tatum was miserable in that fourth quarter and then wasn't good at the start of overtime. And then about halfway through got overtime, all yeah. of a sudden, yeah. right, got the end one, hit a three, got a couple more free throws, and all of a sudden is eight quick points in overtime, and the Celtics win. And I don't think he's the hero, because Jalen Brown is the hero, in my opinion, of the game. Yes. But he was the best guy in the overtime. But it is, th there are too many moments like this where it just feels like the Celtics don't have that guy. And this is something that Celtics fans kill our friend Colin Coward for because he's been saying it all year. There is, there is no shame in being the seventh or eighth best player in the sport. The problem is all of NBA history tells us if you're the seventh or eighth best player in the sport, you're probably not going to win a title. Now, the Celtics are trying to overcome that, but that's the, the, the issue is once you get typically to this round, this year it's not the case for them, somebody that's in that five or six best players is against on the other side of the court. And next round it will be. So, no, I don't feel better about Jason Tatum's game. Yeah, I, I think to your point, Nick, now, and I have not really questioned this before, because I guess his youth, and he's still only 26, yeah. so maybe he'll grow and improve. But now I think you really have to question, it, can he be the best player on a championship team? 
I mean, there are aberrations when Chauncey Billups and the Detroit yeah. Pistons and Gus Williams, as you showed la yesterday, and the Son Super yeah. Sonics back in 1979. But generally, you know, you need to be a great player, uh, an all-time great to lead your team. So I think that is up for question. Now, look, maybe he'll answer that this year. But right now, that's got to be a question. Let me just say this, though, in, in, on behalf of Jason Tatum. Mm -hmm. This is what we're ripping. 36 points, game high, 12 rebounds, team high, and a game high plus 20. And I get it. In the fourth quarter, he missed some, some bad shots. I don't, I'm tired of seeing the fade away when you don't need to fade. Like, coaches would say, go strong to the hoop with your momentum. Fade away is a great shot, but you don't always have to fade, okay? But beyond that, get, I want to give him credit because we know what his challenge has been, right? Clutch. Mm -hmm. Last night, Nick, it wasn't like that game was over when he scored eight points in the last minute 12. Yeah. All right? Eight, I mean, six, it wasn't but, over. But, they were down. That layup we showed where he got fouled, that gave them the lead. They went on a 12-5 game ending run. He had eight of the points. Yes, but the but when if not for the Pacers self-immolating, his clutch numbers from last night are 0 for 3 in the final 90 seconds. Okay, but and then so, you have to regroup yes, and say, okay, I've been right. playing, I've been missing the, shots. Again, I'm not trying to say he was great and everybody's wrong about this, but I'm saying it. What we can't overlook what he did at the end of that game. Only eight in pass blocks. So I mean, really? yeah, I think five assists, three steals, no blocks. So I think I think I'm doing that math. It might have been like, a team show, high. Though. Can I, I show team high. real quick, Wild? Because yeah. I think this is what you were alluding to when you were like he didn't feel comfortable. This was in overtime. This turnover. Where he's trying to get he, out of sand. This it, looks it, like it, me. It, it, so I, I mean, it was just like, like somebody I don't, I don't uh, nah, that it just doesn't feel like the guy. And the point that I, and this is where it sounds odd, but if you just like go back decades at a time and say, okay, seventh or eighth best guy, you know what I mean? Of any given moment, like 20 years ago, that probably was Chris Weber with the Kings. That's a great player. That's a great All NBA level Weber player. Weber's probably been higher. Right, right, thirty years ago, was it Drexler with the Blazers? Like a great player was the was the best player on a team that made two finals. But how did he win his championship? He got with a better player. Forty years ago, was it Bernard King or whomever? Like in that pre injury in that range. Uh, Ewing, the point, uh, right? Or Ewing maybe thirty years ago, right? Like this is, those are great guys. We all know their names. Thirty and forty years later. But in this league, man, if you don't have somebody who is a guaranteed statue in front of the arena post-retirement, you're probably not winning a title with them. Like, there's a few exceptions, but if you don't have a, sta a guaranteed statue outside of the arena, you probably need someone better to win the title. Now, I say all that. They're going to be the favorites in the finals. Yeah, right. He's Most gonna, and, I, we don't finals think they're going to win it, but yeah. And so, but I, that's just, and so last night didn't make and me feel And he's also still young. I mean, it doesn't feel that way, but he is young. He's 26. I know, but we've got. He's a year if, older than Luca. Okay, but if Luca's young and Ant's young, if you're the They're oldest young. of the young no, guys, I, that's why I said it, they, it's S Bob for them. Period. They have got to win it, also, and if they I, don't win this series. There needs to be a new coach if they don't win this Jeez. series. Oh, this series? Well, there will be. They're gonna thank okay. you. They're gonna. You win. act like I'm tripping. Well, first of if all, I'm lose? upset that you brought S. Bob into the NBA. <laughs> it, you just kind of did it, and we expected Nick us to. Nick agrees with me. He does it. it. No one likes it. It is a great transport. Can like, you, uh, Wild? Can you let Brew have a shine? You, you, you no, Brew, right. Brew, you, privately. You, this he, is number. You know three. what he said to me? He was like, we need, we got to stop saying ass docs. We have to take it off the air. <laughs> oh, yeah, now you're trying to ass kill us, Bob. You're, you can't I'm like, trying to kill <laughs> No, Greg you said killed ass Bob. docs on Carton Show today. Yeah, exactly. Greg. Or he said S Bob. He yeah, said uh, S Bob. He said S Bob. Keep going. And. And don't you dare touch my Versace rose. <laughs> it better not be you missing killed one of these days. You killed Lubbock. Well, Lubbock never caught on. So I had to go <laughs> you have to push it. Okay, Over to the West. <laughs> Game one tonight at 8.30. Wolves favored by four and a half. Minnesota won both of their game ones against Phoenix and Denver. The Mavs have lost both of their game ones against the Clippers in OKC, but game. they meet tonight. So who is game one more important for? Well, definitely Minnesota. Oh, wow. We agree. No question. I mean, first of all, you're at home. Yep. All right. Secondly, 
I, I don't even know what the favorite. They should be the favorite. They're favored by four and a half. But in, the series, in the series, yeah. Yes. So they're the favorite in the series. All right, I would think whether I know the numbers or not, they should be the favorites, like right? <laughs> and then, you know, Dallas 0-5 in game ones under Jason Kidd. That's yeah. their last five game ones. They come back to win four of those series. So if Dallas loses, they're going to be fine. Now, all that said, Nick, and I think you guys have to agree with this, Minnesota's shown it. If they lose tonight, I think you'd be crazy to write them oh, off. I totally right? agree I mean, they that. showed you against Denver. like you, They are not into negative momentum. They will not succumb to negative momentum. So if Dallas were to win the first two, I don't think you could just say it's over because we saw what they did against Denver. It would be somewhat bleak. I mean, yeah. obviously, they'd have yeah, everything going bleak. for them. Yeah. But still, this team, who would have thought they would have come back from down 3-2? Sure. All right, so, but all that said, yeah, it's more important I, for I, this. Yeah, I think you, you the, the reasons you said is why I agree. Luka loses game one, man. Even pre-J kid. He, I think Luca's won one. There's been one series the Mavs have won game one since he's been there, and it's the game one he missed. I think that's accurate. Oh, wow. the, the, when he was out injured against Utah. Uh, they, this, t- oh, typi- Brunson. T- right, Brunson played yep. great. Typically, right, right. they don't win game one. Minnesota's at home. And, and this is where, like, there was a really dumb, really dumb meme going around the internet yesterday, which was a picture of Kyrie and LeBron and a picture of Kyrie and Luka. And it was like, Kyrie didn't want to follow him, but is fine following him. I wonder what changed. And the answer is seven years, man. Were they, they trying to make that I, racial I have no idea what they were trying to make it. Whatever it was was stupid. But the point is, the guy grew up. And Kyrie Irving is a different person than he was seven years ago. I think he's a different person than he was two years ago. And so I say, the reason I say that is for this. I don't think Kyrie's going to let them get emotionally unsettled by a loss. I think Kyrie Irving is the steady hand of this wow. team. And it is I have been as vocal of a Kyrie critic of his, you know, post Cavs journey as anybody. I am the one who last year picked the Mavs to win the title and then when they got Kyrie said, "Well, now they can't because I thought he was so uh, antithetical to winning." He has been a great leader this year and because Luka is so emotionally combustible, I think he is a great wingman for that for the other players on the team. And so I'm not worried about if the Mavs lose game one, you know, that, where their head's going to be at, because Kyrie is going to be able to credibly talk about being down 3-1, talk about the length of the series, those things. So that's okay. where I think I, I think it's definitely more important for Minnesota and to make it clear that they didn't just win their championship. The thing with Minnesota is you want, you're always worry when you have that huge victory that a lot of people thought was impossible, that no one could beat them in seven-game series, all those things, that they don't have a championship letdown. It's it. not no, all right, I, Wilds, I, what? it's the moment of truth. I'm not ready yet. You won't do a pick? I'm not ready yet. When it, do you, the, the series starts tonight. This is what you, you guys at the bar be like, hey, man, you need to get back out there. Yeah. I'm not ready yet, guys. I'm not ready yet. Well, that she's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you'll like her. I'm not ready. Do it. You'll I'm not like her. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm okay. not ready. Okay. Rogers is back and focused at Jets practice through three touchdowns. Can wow. you believe that? Wow. So much for that Jets defense. Next on FS1. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.